What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today I'm gonna show you how I built this beautiful, smoky, toasty, clean burning fire. That's right, folks. Today we are talking fire management. Hem it up! When it comes to cooking barbecue, especially Central Texas style barbecue, it's all about keeping it as simple as possible. If you start out with some quality meat, some salt and pepper, and a good clean burning fire, you've got everything you need to create some world-class BBQ. That being said, with such few elements, you really need to master every one of them to get the best, most consistent results. So today we're talking fire management, how to build a fire, how to maintain temps in an offset smoker, and it is going to be smoky. Oh. oh my God, that's the first time that's literally ever worked. Can we go two for two? Nope. First things first, let's talk about getting your fire started. The most traditional method would be to light a match, light a piece of paper, get some kindling lit or some wood chips, and that'll give you a flame big enough to get your logs caught. This is a great method. That's what I use to get my fireplace started in my living room or get a campfire going, but not my favorite way for cookers. Your next best bet would be to get some greased up butcher paper. This is a method you see a lot in barbecue joints around here because if you're wrapping in paper, then you're gonna have a lot of greasy butcher paper on hand. But you can also grab yourself some cooking oil of some sort, get this greased up, roll it up, stick it underneath your logs, and this will burn nice and hot and a great way to get your fire started. And again, both of those methods work great, but they're not my favorite way to get a fire started. And that's simply because it takes the longest to get a consistent fire burning. In a sentence, fire management on an offset smoker comes down to two elements. Your coal bed, which is there for your heat, and your wood, which is there for your smoke and your flavor, as well as replenishing the coal bed. And with the first two methods of getting your fire lit, you're gonna have to wait for those logs to break down into a coal bed before you get some really even consistent temperatures. Where for me, I like to skip the middleman and just start out with some charcoal to help getting that clean fire burning as quickly as possible. When it comes to charcoal, there are two main types you're gonna find, your briquettes and your lump charcoal. Briquettes is basically sawdust that's been compressed together with some binders to make these really uniform, even little chunks here that burn really consistently. And then you've got your lump over here, which is just wood that's already burned down. And with the first two methods of burning wood down, you're essentially just making your own lump charcoal. So this is typically what I'll start with because it's the most natural and lights a lot quicker than burning logs. Briquettes and lump both have their advantages and their disadvantages, and I use both on a weekly basis. The good thing about briquettes is that they burn very consistently, they're really predictable, and you know exactly what you're getting with every chimney starter. As opposed to lump, where everything is completely different sizes, some are big chunks, some are really small, there's a lot of dust, they tend to crackle and spit a lot, and where it does burn hotter and a little bit longer, you really don't know what you're getting, because every bag is completely different. The downside with briquettes is that it's made out of compressed sawdust, and when it burns down, it turns back into that dust and creates a really fine ash that can smother your fire and blow in the wind really easily. It's very light and it gets everywhere. And especially on an offset cooker where there's a lot of convection and airflow ripping through the smoker, if you use briquettes, you're very likely gonna get a lot of ash all over your meat, especially if you're using the handy dandy little leaf blower that I like to use. So briquettes I really like for grilling, hot and fast, single cooks, where I don't have to worry about the ash getting all over the food. Where lump on the other hand has a lot less ash and breaks down the exact same way that wood does. So my general rule of thumb is briquettes if I'm doing some hot and fast grilling, lump if I'm building a fire or trying to create a really consistent coal bed, whether it's in the offset or on the mini chud box, lump is typically what I'm gonna reach for. When it comes to getting charcoal lit, there are again several options to go with. I usually have one of these handy. I use a yellow bottle because it burns the hottest and this is what I make hinges with in the welding shop so I always have these on hand, but any propane tank will work. And the simplest way to go about it would be to put a pile of lump charcoal into your smoker, get this thing lit and just hold it right on the coals for a bit to get one side lit. Then you can walk away and the chain reaction will start and that whole pile will get lit up and you don't have to worry about any starters or chimneys, anything like that. But it's gonna take a lot longer because you're lighting it in one specific point that's gonna have to spread naturally as opposed to using something like a chimney starter which has a lot more airflow and does a much quicker job. I've got a love-hate relationship with these chimney starters. On one hand, they're really cheap and they get the job done really well. But on the other hand, they're made really poorly and they tend to burn out and die after a couple of months. This one was new when I started the channel and it is on its last legs. But have no fear, the Chud Chimney Starter is in the works. I just need to cut the weight down on it a little bit because right now it's incredibly heavy. 
but you've seen me use this in every video. I'll typically fill this up with lump charcoal and then get this little guy right through one of these holes where it tends to sit naturally. And I can walk away for five minutes, get it nice and hot. And 20 minutes later, we've got a big rip and coal bed ready to go. I do that just because I always forget to buy these little guys. Tumbleweeds, fire starters. It's basically some straw with some wax in there that burns really hot and really fast. And it's a great way to get your fire started. But again, I always forget to pick them up at the grocery store. So the simplest way I found to get a fire started is to throw one or two of these right into the bottom of this, fill it with lump charcoal, light those, walk away, and it's a hands-free way to get a really good coal bed. The other way to get your charcoal lit is to use some lighter fluid or some match light charcoal. Match light charcoal is essentially some briquettes that are already soaked in lighter fluid, and you can literally just light the bag and walk away. And it's definitely not the most recommended way to go about it, because this is literally poison, and you really don't want to be getting this near your food. It's best to stay away, even though it's tempting because it's super easy. But on the other hand, on an offset cooker, you've got a fire box so you're a little farther away from the food and the grate so it's not the worst thing in the world but if you're cooking on a Weber kettle or a ceramic grill I would definitely try to avoid these that being said I'd be lying to you if I didn't use it fairly often especially when I'm burning out smokers where I'm just gonna get it really hot to burn all the chemicals out of the tank anyway this comes in real handy because you can just light it walk away and you'll have a big ripping fire in no time but they have their time and they have their place Hope you guys enjoyed that joke. In my boot, there is a snake. Whew. It is freezing in Austin right now. Look at that, there's ice on my pit. I wanted to wait till this time of year to make this video because it's a good day to be playing with fire, but whew, it's supposed to snow tomorrow. While we wait for our coals to come up to temp, let's talk about wood. Traditionally speaking, barbecue uses whatever wood's around in your region. Here in Central Texas, we've got a lot of this. This is post oak. This is what I use in all my cooks. It's a great wood for barbecue because it burns evenly, very consistently, has a nice mild smoke to it, which is great for a cook like brisket because you can cook for hours and hours without overpowering the meat with too much smoky flavor. There are hundreds of species of oak. Post oak is one of them. But if you're looking to get some wood for barbecue, this is a great place to start. Other woods we find around here is pecan, which has got a really nice flavor to it, a little sweeter than oak, a little more smoky flavor to it, which is great for shorter cooks like chicken or pork ribs or something like that. It's in the hickory family, so it's got a bit of a sweeter smoke to it. We're also gonna run into a lot of mesquite around here, which has got a lot more flavor than oak, burns really hot and fast, great for grilling. Next time I get a wood delivery, I'm definitely gonna get some mesquite to play around with. Other woods you're gonna commonly see used for cooking are fruit woods, apple wood, that kind of thing, and they're pretty mild and flavor so not ideal for barbecue but great again for grilling or for fish something like that or just a good heat source in general but really what you're looking for is a good hard wood that has been seasoned properly meaning it's not green which is freshly cut down and still has a lot of water weight to it and not bone dry or kiln dried which is something you'll see a lot at the grocery store which will just burn up really quickly with very little smoke no flavor and you're gonna have a hard time controlling your fire these logs are all pretty consistent in length and size but when you're going through the wood stack for your smoker, you'll often see pitmasters picking through the wood pile to find the best log for the need. Most of what you're doing is feeling for that water weight we were talking about, that density. This one particularly is very green. I can tell just by the weight to size ratio, something you get a feel for over time. This feels really heavy for what it looks like as opposed to this one right here, which feels really nice, not too dry, not too heavy. This is gonna be a great log for getting the fire started as well as getting some really good clean smoke. As for this denser one, I'll typically just put it to the side save it till the end of the wood pile so hopefully it'll dry out by the time I need it or save it for later in the cook when there's big ridge and coal bed and it. it'll help dry it out a lot quicker. Other variables you want to look at when choosing wood for your smoker is rounds versus splits, branch versus flatter pieces like this. I typically try to stay away from these, especially in the beginning of the cook, because they're a lot more dense and they're not gonna catch nearly as quickly. So much like a greener piece, I'll save it for middle or end of the cook, where a piece like this has got some nice thin edges on it that's gonna light up really quick. It's kind of frayed a bit, which is just gonna help it burn and break down a lot quicker, less bark on there. This would be a great piece to throw on the fire because of all the surface area. Choosing your logs to get your fire started right off the bat is really important because 
because the meat's gonna absorb the most smoky flavor in the first three, four hours of the cook. And that's when you really wanna pick through and find the nice choice logs. Whereas all these other logs that you may not like as much, you can save for later in the cook when you're just focusing on bark building. So for me, what I'm gonna look for is a piece like this, this wedge shape. This will fit really nicely in the bottom of the round firebox. And then another piece like this that'll catch really easy. And then a piece like this, very light to the touch, which is gonna help catch really well, get us a nice clean burning fire as quickly as possible. And I know on that pit, three decent sized logs like this should be just enough to get this thing up to 300 degrees where we wanna be. We're gonna take that wedge piece I was just talking about. We're gonna put it right here on this side. It kind of follows the natural curve of the firebox as well as putting the nice thin edge towards the fire, which is really gonna help that log catch. From here, a lot of people will put another log on this side and do a little Lincoln log pattern, which works well. But for me, I like to just put one on. That way, instead of the log sitting way up here, it'll cascade down a little bit closer to the coals right there. That way you've got some really nice airflow between the wood and the coal bed, which is gonna help promote a really clean fire. And one thing you never wanna do is just put a big piece of wood like this right on top of the coal bed, because that's gonna smother it, which is gonna create a lot of dirty smoke, and it's gonna put the fire out as opposed to creating some nice clean combustion. So that's why I always have one piece on this side, and then I usually do two right across like that. And that should be just enough to catch both of these logs in a pretty quick manner, having a lot of airflow in there to produce some really nice clean combustion and some clean smoke. As you can see, the early combustion of wood is really smoky. So I always like to leave the door open to help improve airflow. And this is when I usually bust out the cute little leaf blower. The leaf blower comes in real handy for two reasons. One, it's gonna help the logs catch a lot quicker, which is gonna be great for helping get you up to temp as fast as possible, as well as it's gonna help burn off all the water and other chemicals that happen in the early stages of combustion that produce this really thick, white, dirty smoke. And it's nice to get those out of the way as well for the neighbors. I don't wanna be sending this huge cloud of smoke over at Carl if I don't have to. So by expediting the ignition process here, we should be burning a lot quicker in just a few seconds. This is just the smallest leaf blower I could find from DeWalt. And I really like it because it's got a variable speed trigger on it. Meaning if I pull it really lightly, we're just gonna have a whisper of air coming out. And you can also pull it all the way to get more. And it's got a turbo setting. So I can clean off the patio at the same time. Highly recommend one of these, especially if you're having problems getting your logs lit or if you're in a residential area like I am. These are also great throughout the cook too. If your temperature drops down a little bit, you can use this to help the next log catch quicker. And especially if you're using one of these, this is why you wanna stay away from charcoal briquettes. As you can see, it's been just a few seconds and this fire is ripping hot. We've got some really nice clean convection going on. Flames are dancing. That's what we wanna see. So at this point, we're gonna shut down the lid, make sure our damper is wide open, door is wide open, and this should be humming along in just a few moments. As I stated before, the difference between a dirty smoke and a clean burning fire is all about how close you are to complete combustion, which has everything to do with airflow. So whenever you're putting a new log in the fire, you always wanna have it up against the wall or at an angle or leaning against something else like this. That way you're gonna have some airflow between the coals and the wood and you're not gonna be smothering anything and you'll end up with that nice clean heat and that really thin blue smoke that we're all after. This is the same reason why I have a V-shaped firebox in every chud pit that I make because the log can sit horizontally horizontally in there and it'll be naturally suspended above the coals. If you happen to have a big batch of green wood, there's a few different things you can do about it. A lot of people like to just put these on their firebox, which is a great idea. It'll help warm it up and help it evaporate a little bit of moisture that way. You gotta be careful though, because I have lit many logs on fire on top of the firebox. A lot of people too will smoke their logs. You can put them right up front here for a little bit. That's a great way to help them dry out a little bit more. But again, you gotta be careful because if you light that on fire in there, with all the grease that's in there, you're gonna end up with a lot of dirty smoke. One thing to think about as well is the back pressure in here. It's got such a big firebox pushing smoke this way that it's gonna hit that back wall and push back a little bit. And as you can see, we got a lot of smoke coming out of this firebox end. So it's usually at this stage that I'll shut this door just about that much and that'll help push all the smoke forward while still having plenty of airflow going in. Beautiful. Now that all the ice is melted, we are up to temp rocking right at 300 degrees. And as you can see, we've got some beautiful clean smoke coming out of that stack up top and we are ready to start cooking. 
From here on out, the name of the game is maintaining temperature, and that is by anticipating the decline of the current wood and the incline of the new wood. What that means is as these logs burn down and turn into charcoal, they're gonna break down and start losing heat. And on the other side, as soon as we throw in a fresh log, it's gonna take a good 10, 15 minutes to heat up, lose its water, and really fully combust. So trying to time that decline of this wood plus startup of the new wood is really what it's all about. And unfortunately, that only comes with time and experience, but we're all cavemen and this is fire and it comes pretty intuitively and especially if you're doing a brisket cook or a pork butt or anything that takes a few hours you're gonna have plenty of time on your hands to figure out the fire poke it around move things around get to know it and that's what half the fun of barbecue is one question I get asked all the time is about wood sourcing. If you hop on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or check the classifieds, there's always someone peddling wood or someone who had a tree fall down on their land. And if you look around, good wood is not hard to find. It may be tough because you don't know if it's properly seasoned. And as I was saying earlier, you can always force season it by throwing it on your firebox for a little bit before cooking. Another question I get asked all the time is people who have problems with their pit temperature spiking and dropping. And for those people, I say everything I've said in this video that you should start with a better coal bed. Maybe you've got a smoker with a really small firebox on it. You can start out with two or three chimneys in there and that way the coals themselves are gonna get you up to temperature and you can throw one or two logs on at a time just for some smoke. One of the beauties of this cooker or any offset made in the last few years is nowadays they have really big fireboxes on them. And that's another great way to control your temperatures. Cause I've got maybe three or four logs in there right now and this thing is huge. So another way I could bump up or decrease a few 20, 30, 40 degrees would be shifting the fire physically. If I push the logs really close to the exchange right here, it's gonna bump up the temperature. Same thing, I could pull them all the way back towards the door, which is just gonna increase the area between the meat and the heat. And you can gain or lose a few degrees that way. So let's say you come out here and this pit is up at 600 degrees. Happens to the best of us. What do you do? First thing, don't panic. Just open up this door. That way, no matter what's going on in the firebox, you know that the cook chamber will cool down and you're not gonna toast your meat. From there, you can tackle your fire. One thing you can do is kind of bury the logs into the coal bed. I know I just went on a whole rant about how you're not supposed to do that, but you have to learn the rules before you know how to break them. And once this thing is humming along, cooking clean, you can start burying the coals, which will decrease the amount of oxygen and you're not gonna get nearly as much dirty smoke as if you were to say, Say, shut the door completely. That's something that people automatically think they should do if it's too hot is shut the door. But what that does is cuts off the oxygen supply, which is gonna give you a bunch of dirty smoke. It's gonna kill your fire. And next time you open the door, it's just gonna go right back to raging. So that's something you wanna avoid at all costs. Another tip you can use if you're cooking too hot would be to close this damper maybe about halfway and open your firebox door completely. That's gonna increase the amount of back pressure we were talking about earlier, sending a lot of smoke in that direction while still maintaining some clean airflow through here. All right, y'all, and that is pretty much it when it comes to fire management. There are tons of tips and tricks you'll pick up along the way, but it's really just about getting those reps in and getting that hands-on experience and really just learning to relax. You're not gonna ruin a brisket if you spike it up to 350 for 10 minutes. You're not gonna ruin a rack of ribs if you drop it down to 225 for an hour. Barbecue is very forgiving, and at the end of the day, it's all about cooking some good food for friends and family and just getting to know your cooker. Every cooker is gonna cook a little bit differently, so there's no hard, fast answers for any of this stuff. It all just comes with time and practice. But that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything or picked up a trick or two, please let me know by hitting that subscribe button. It really helps your channel grow. If there's anything I didn't cover, feel free to let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, let me know what you want to see me cook or talk about next. Head over to chudsbbq.com for all pit inquiries, wait lists, pricing, and all that good stuff. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!